Welcome and thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. My name is Clay Lexon and I'm an engineer with the City of Moorhead. This PowerPoint is meant to serve as a source of information for a street construction project that is proposed to take place in the summer of 2022. This presentation is for City Project number 22-A2-01 and includes work on 10th Avenue North, 13th Avenue North, 13th Street North, and 13th and a Half Street North. In this presentation, I will give you a brief explanation of how the city selects its projects, how we decide which streets to do, and what kind of work we're going to be doing. I will also explain the kind of work we are proposing to do in your neighborhood. At the end of this presentation will be several slides of common questions we receive about these projects and their answers. The purpose of this presentation is to provide our residents with information about the projects and also provide an opportunity for residents to solicit feedback. You may be wondering how and why your street was chosen for improvements. There are several factors that are taken into consideration. The most significant factor is what we call a pavement condition index or PCI for short. And this allows us to create a value or a grade or score as a representation of a condition of a certain road. The PCI is a numerical value with zero being the worst and 100 being the best. Zero would mean that there's no pavement left and 100 would essentially mean that it's brand new construction. Every roadway and every street within the city gets one of these values, and we update these values annually. The city hires a consultant to evaluate the condition of the road, and we take that information and we feed it into our pavement management software. And that helps us determine which projects to do based on our budget for the year. We also take into consideration additional factors, including the age of the street, how it was constructed, whether any utility repairs are needed on the sanitary sewer or storm sewer, and whether our street work can be coordinated with other utility companies on their upcoming projects. For our street projects, we plan five years ahead. Right now, if you go to the city's website, you can view our CIP plan and see all the street improvement projects that we are proposing to do. So we use our pavement management software and our proposed budget for each respective year, and we develop a five-year plan. It tells us which streets we should do and how to get the most out of our tax dollars. One of the ways that we use our money the most efficiently is by performing major maintenance at critical points during the life of the street. And specifically, this happens when we are able to perform what's called a mill and overlay. And I'll explain this type of project and several others on the next slide. On this slide, I'll explain the three major types of projects that we typically perform on streets. These are what we refer to as a mill and overlay, a rehab, and a reconstruction. A mill and overlay is the simplest of these three types of projects. During a mill and overlay, we remove the top couple inches of pavement using a milling machine, and then we put down a couple inches of new bituminous or asphalt pavement. During these projects, we are also required by law to update sidewalk and pedestrian ramps at intersections to make them ADA compliant. And we will also replace certain sections of curb and gutter if they aren't draining right or if they've been damaged. We will also make repairs to the storm sewer inlets and manholes if that's needed. Again, it's important to know that the mill and overlay project is the most cost effective project that we have. We get the most life out of our roads for the least amount of money. A mill and overlay will, on average, cost a little over $3 a square foot of roadway. The next type of project is what we call a rehab. This is where we will go and replace the entire pavement section, but we will leave the curb and gutter largely in place. We will do spot repairs on the curb and gutter and make ADA updates and storm sewer improvements. This project is more involved than a mill and overlay and on average costs a little more than $7 a square foot of roadway, a little more than double what a mill and overlay costs. A reconstruction is where we will completely replace the pavement and the curb and gutter. This is the most complex project and we'll, we will do and typically costs a little over $10 a square foot of roadway, more than three times what a mill and overlay costs. Now that I've given a little bit of detail on the types of projects we do, I'm going to explain when we typically like to do these projects and how it relates to PCI. Over time and from use, the PCI of any given street will decrease. From time to time, we will perform maintenance on that street. And the type of maintenance depends on several factors, but it is influenced by the PCI. 
The chart on this slide shows how our maintenance strategies change depending on the PCI value. On the top, you can see the PCI values going from 100 to zero, so from best to worst. As you read from top to bottom, you can also see our different strategies and how they change as the PCI gets lower. For the early years of the pavement, we do minor maintenance such as crack sealing and seal coating or chip seals. When the PCI drops into the 70s, we start to look at more significant significant maintenance such as a mill and overlay in order to bring that PCI back up. If the PCI is even lower, and we don't think that a mill and overlay will be cost effective, we will look at more extensive projects where we might replace the entire pavement section, which is called a rehab, or completely replace the pavement of the curb and gutter, which is called a reconstruction. And generally, the lower the PCI, the worst condition the road is in, and the more extensive and expensive the project becomes. On this slide is a graph that compares PCI versus time. And the purpose of this graph is to show the value of maintenance. And as I mentioned before, the mill and overlay type of project is the most cost effective project type that we are able to do. If we are able to get in and perform that type of work at critical points in the life of the road, we not only spend less, but we actually extend the life of the street by a number of years. The graph compares two scenarios, a street with maintenance and a street without maintenance. And the red line is a street with no mill and overlay maintenance performed on it. It starts at a PCI value of 100 and over time decreases. Once it hits about 30, we would then reconstruct or rehab the road. And this cycle is shown twice. The blue line represents a road that does have mill and overlay maintenance performed on it. We would try to come in and do a mill and overlay right around a PCI of about 60. When we perform that work, the road is repaired and the PCI is increased back to 100. So the next time we come back to do major road work, uh, a mill and overlay may not be effective and we may let the road decrease down to about 30. And then at that point, we would do either a rehab or a reconstruction. And this cycle is shown twice. Across the bottom of the graph are several blue and red arrows that represent the life cycle of the road. These arrows are showing that a road with mill and overlay maintenance actually extends the life of the road, meaning that it's a longer period of time before we need to reconstruct it. Not only do we extend the life of the road, but based on the data that we have from past projects, we know that we will be spending less money on maintaining our roads when we do it this way, and that the condition of the road will also be maintained at a higher level. The average PCI of a road with no maintenance is about 68. The average PCI of a road with mill and overlay maintenance is about 73. And that just means it's a nicer road with a smoother ride. So far, I've gone over a little information on the types of projects that we do and some of the reasonings behind how we determine which streets to do work on. Now I'm going to go over some project specific information about what we're proposing to do in your neighborhood. On this slide is a snippet of the city's five-year CIP plan. On the top, circled in red, is the designation 22A and several streets overlaid in green. This project, 22A, is the same as engineer number 22-A2-01 and includes work on 10th Avenue North from 11th Street to 14th Street, 13th Avenue North from 11th Street to 14th Street, 13th Street North from 10th Avenue to 15th Avenue, and 13th and a half Street from 13th Avenue to 15th Avenue. Most of the roads in this area were constructed in the 1950s. There really hasn't been any significant street construction projects since then. Some minor maintenance work has been performed on these streets, including seal coats in 2006 and 2007, and the Public Works Street Department has likely completed similar work several times since then. Many of the ADA ramps in the project area are non-compliant, so those will be replaced. There are also some areas of sidewalk that will be replaced so that we can make those ADA compliant as well. It's important to note though that we will not be replacing all of the sidewalk within the project area. There are also some sections of curb and gutter that we are replacing or attempting to correct to improve drainage on the street. The utilities, including the storm sewer and sanitary sewer, are in good condition, and we're not proposing any significant work to those at this time. The proposed improvements for this area include all three of the major types of construction projects that I mentioned earlier. 
On the picture, you can see what type of work we're proposing and where it will be located. We are proposing a mill and overlay on 10th Avenue and 13th Avenue. This is shown as the solid green line. This will include removing and replacing a couple inches of pavement on the existing road. We are proposing a rehab on 13th Street, which is shown as the solid blue line, and will include the complete replacement of the pavement section. However, the curb and gutter will largely remain in place. On 13th and a half street, we are proposing a reconstruction, which is shown as the solid red line. This will involve replacing the pavement and curb and gutter, and because of the nature of the work and narrow right of way on 13th and a half, we are also proposing to replace the sidewalk. It's important to note that Moorhead Public Service will be replacing the water main on 13th Street and 13th and a half street between 13th Avenue and 15th Avenue. This work is shown as the blue dotted line. This work will be done by MPS under a separate contract. Lastly, Excel Energy will be upgrading their gas mains in the entire project area. That will also be done under a separate project. On this slide, I've got some project specific information for you. The anticipated start date for this project would be sometime in May or June. This is a large enough project that I'm expecting the contractor to want to get an early start, but it will be dependent on the contractor's schedule and it'll be weather dependent as well. We will likely hold a pre-construction conference in April, and at that meeting, we'll get a construction schedule from the contractor and we'll know approximately when they wanna start. At that, that time, the city will send out notifications to all the property owners in the project area to let you know when the approximate start date is as well. As I mentioned previously, Moorhead Public Service and Excel both have projects in this area. It's likely that they will want to get an early start on their projects. And I'm mentioning this again because it's going to be a very busy project area with a lot of work happening. And I just want to clarify that if you see them beginning their work, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're about to begin construction on the street. I do, however, want to make it clear that when they start their work, there are going to be areas in the road where they are excavating there will be sections of the sidewalk that are going to be removed as they work to reconnect services. And there will be sections of curb and gutter that may get removed as well. So generally when they do this, they maintain full access for the residents, but it is something that I want to make you aware of. The final completion date for this project is September 30th. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the entire project area will be in a state of construction from May to the end of September. It just means that the contractor will have a window of time in which to complete the project. The project will also be completed in phases and each phase has a specific amount of time allotted for construction. In regard to resident access during construction, there will be times, especially in the rehab and reconstruction areas where residents will not have access to their driveways and will need to park vehicles on nearby streets that are not under construction. When this becomes necessary, you'll get notified several days in advance that the road closure is gonna happen. We'll also have staff on site throughout the duration of the project that you can contact with questions. If you need any special considerations for access, please contact me as soon as possible and let me know so that we can do our best to accommodate you. For example, this, this may be a resident who makes use of a wheelchair or a resident who frequently makes use of the FM Ride Source program. If you would like, please feel free to reach out to me and speak to me about your situation and I'll do my best to accommodate you during construction. We will notify the police department that we have a construction project in the area, so they should not be ticketing if you're parked on a side street. But if you do get a ticket, contact me and we'll work to get it taken care of. Lastly, regarding garbage and recycling pickup, this will still happen more or less as normal. If the trucks cannot get through to you to pick up your containers like they normally do, we'll ask that you bring your containers to the end of your driveway and then the contractor will round them up, bring them to a common point for collection, and then they'll be returned to you. If this becomes necessary, we just ask that you put your name and house number somewhere on the container so that it can be returned to you. Now, when the city does projects like this, we typically get a lot of questions related to funding. So the next several slides are gonna be focused on that. Now we've estimated that the total project cost will be approximately $1.2 million. That includes all of the costs associated with construction as well as the fees associated with financing the project. And the funding on this project comes from two sources. 
special assessments, and general obligation bonds. Special assessments on this project will come in just one type, so a front footage assessment. And those assessments are expected to generate approximately $337,000, roughly one quarter of the cost of the project. The remaining $863,000, roughly three quarters of the project cost, will be funded through general obligation bonds that the city obtains on the open market. And those bonds are paid on through the city's general tax levy fund. Naturally, one of the questions that residents have after hearing about assessments is, well, how much am I going to be assessed for the project? So by city policy, special assessments will be levied against the benefiting properties. As I mentioned before, there is only one type of assessment on this project, which is a front footage assessment. So properties immediately adjacent to any of the streets in the project area will receive a special assessment based on the type of work being performed on their street and based on the front footage of their property. So for rectangular lots, front footage is determined as the width of the property abutting the street that is being improved. The rate depends on the type of work being done on the street. If the city is doing a mill and overlay, it's $32 a front foot. If it's a rehab, it's $65 a front foot. And for reconstruction, it's $111 a front foot. This project area includes streets that will be mill and overlaid, some streets will be re rehabbed, and some streets will be reconstructed. The assessments then are going to vary quite a bit depending on where in the project area you live. So on the previous slides, I've discussed the assessment rates. On this slide, I want to do just a, a very simple example that has the assessment rates. And we're going to consider a, a property that is 60 feet wide, which is um, somewhat normal for this area of town. So if you have a mill and overlay, if you're on a mill and overlay area, which is $32 a front foot, and you have a property that's 60 feet wide, uh, your assessment would be $1,920. If it's a rehab, uh, which is $65 a front foot, your assessment would be $3,900. A reconstruction, which is $111 a front foot, would be $6,600. So on the previous slide, I went through an example for determining assessments, and, and typically those assessments would be added to the property taxes in January of the following year after the project. So it's 2022, and we're proposing to do this project. In the fall of 2022, you'll receive a notice from the city letting you know that the what the assessments would be. And then in January of 2023, that amount would be officially added to your property taxes. And typically, those assessments are paid out over a period of 20 years. And the city uses a constant principle method for determining the assessment. And that's shown in the table on the right-hand side. Property owners should know that if they want, they'll have the opportunity to pay part or all of the assessment amount before it's officially added to the property taxes. This allows the property owner to pay less interest or no interest if they were to choose to pay it all off. The table on the right hand side shows year one through year 20 and shows the starting assessment amount, the principal and the interest, the total annual payment. In this example, it's an assessment amount of $5,000. So you can see that the, the principal amount stays the same from year one to year 20, that the interest amount decreases each year. And so the total annual payment as a part of your property taxes would decrease as well. In this example, the annual amount in year one is $475 a year or about 40 bucks a month. In year 20, it would be about half of that at $261 or $22 a month. One question that we get quite often and one that will be applicable on this project as well is, you know, I live on a street corner. Uh, will I be assessed for work on both streets? So like I said, this is this is definitely going to happen in this project. We'll have a number of properties that will have construction on, on two sides uh, of their property. And, and generally, no, we don't assess the property twice. There's a 150 foot credit that is applied to all corner lots on the side street side. So if your lot is less than 150 feet deep, you will not receive an assessment for that work. This will be the last slide before we conclude this presentation. Please feel free to contact us if you have suggestions for improvements within the project area. Sometimes we miss things. Uh, and as a resident, you live and drive and walk in these neighborhoods. And so you, you know it much better than we do. 
But if you see something, you have a question on whether or not we're going to address it, please feel free to reach out and contact. This is also a really good time to contact us if you need to have repairs made to your sanitary sewer service. Uh, the way this generally works is that, that as a homeowner, you will hire a contractor to do the work um, on the service. But there are ways that if you're interested, you can have the cost of that replacement or repair can be added as an assessment to your property taxes. And that requires uh, that you submit a petition to the city, but there are ways around uh, ways to do that. If you're interested in that, you can contact me and I can explain the process a little bit more. Also, this is, uh, we'd ask you that if you have irrigation systems, if you have sprinkler systems, or if you have sump pumps that are in your front yard or by the sidewalk or by the curb and gutter, that you let us know about that as well. Oftentimes we, we have no record of where those are and uh, one of the ways we find them is during construction when we're digging. So if you do, if you have one, please notify us so that we can mark it. Uh, it just helps us out uh, quite a bit. If you are interested in receiving periodic email updates about the project, both prior to construction and during construction, there's a way you can do that. If you go to the city's website and click on the e-notification tab on the top of the page, there will be a spot where you can fill in some contact information and select the 22-82-01 street improvement project. Submit all that information, and then you'll be put on a list. So anytime that we send out updates, you will receive that email. Lastly, here is contact information for you. There's my email and phone number. If you have a question, feel free to reach out on either one of those methods. If you have a question related specifically to special assessments, either amounts or rates or how the whole process works, feel free to get a hold of Amy Weigel. She is the special assessments coordinator. I want to thank you for watching this presentation. Again, feel free to reach out with any questions. Thanks.